now give the floor to Sri Lanka. Thank you, Mr. President, for convening this meeting on accelerating and scaling up the sustainable development goals within our common agenda. Allow me, Mr. President, briefly to present Sri Lanka's position on some selected proposals in the Common Agenda report. Firstly, on the Fund for Social Protection, we believe that the social protection systems in the country should be tailor-made to be inclusive, nationally owned and nationally driven, and it is our responsibility to ensure allocation of fiscal provision and liquidity for the implementation of such programs. Sri Lanka, while considering the sustainability as the cornerstone of its national policy framework, has been providing its citizens with several social protection mechanisms, even amidst the pandemic, ensuring our government's commitment to inclusive protection and participation for all. Secondly, let me say a word on the informal economy. We echo the significance in providing employment opportunities, universal health coverage, adequate housing, and education for all, including people in vulnerable situations, especially women and migrant workers. In transferring to sustainable economies, the developing countries need to be provided with adequate financing, Mr. President, technology transfer on preferential terms, in addition to the provisions on capacity building. The government of Sri Lanka provides welfare facilities such as free education, free health care, free infrastructure and petroleum, electricity and water at subsidized rates alongside comparable low tax bans. It must be noted that it is these very welfare state measures that have contributed to the financial stress Sri Lanka has undergone in the course of the pan pandemic. Thirdly, transformative gender measures. Sri Lanka reaffirms its commitment to gender equality in line with SDG 5 and the empowerment of all our women and girls. While reiterating our efforts to implement the CEDAW, the Beijing Declaration, and the gender responsive implementation of the 2030 Agenda, Sri Lanka acknowledges the development outcomes that could be attained following such empowerment and fully support the important work of the Commission on the Status of Women in promoting and protecting the rights of women. It is noteworthy that a majority of young women proceed to pursue tertiary learning and also inducted to the public service throughout the entire canvas of public administration and the private sector. As regards jobs and economic opportunities and job creation, we have seen the impact of the pandemic in the area of employment, which has resulted in layoffs of lots of jobs opportunities, a change of the working environment, and therefore underscores the urgent necessity in creating job opportunities in line with SDG 8. Sri Lanka wishes to reiterate the need of investment with a view to enhancing economic growth, especially relating to capacity building. In the case of just transition, while noting that peaking for net zero emissions for many developing countries would be achieved at a later date in comparison to developed countries, the principal equity and common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities should not be forgotten. Sri Lanka's progressive agenda on the environment is despite the resource constraints it faces as a developing nation, which includes increasing renewable energy sources to 70% by 2030, achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. Mr. President, Sri Lanka remains ambitious to realize the Sustainable Development Goals as set out in the 2030 Agenda, and it is our strong belief that the United Nations Secretary General's Common Agenda, as spelled out by the SG, will be as effective an agenda to pursue in the realization of these goals. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Sri Lanka for her statement and now